So to date at Curated, we have owned probably something like eight or nine, maybe 11 Mura SVs, uh, which is quite astonishing because there's only 150 in the world and there's probably only 120 or 130 left. Uh, many were destroyed, they caught fire. It's really sort of a Mura SV because of my dad and his car and you know my passion for the cars, it's really sort of become this cornerstone of the business. We got a call from a very, very well-respected collector and dealer I basically say he's almost retired now, but this is someone that's owned numerous Mira SVs and really is a legend in the industry. He called my dad first. They've known each other for 20, 30 years. And he said, hey, I, I think I found a Mira SV in like the jungle in Brazil. And I'd never heard of a Mira SV being in Brazil. There's actually a, a great photo of a Mira that was, I think it was a P400 or an S, a green car in Brazil, somewhere in Rio. So there's a cool photo. You could see the the you know, the hills and whatnot, and mountains. But I'd never heard of an SV in Brazil. So I started trying to do some research. I really couldn't find anything. He basically said, you know, I, I've got a relationship with this gentleman in Brazil. I've got a relationship with the owner. The father died. The son is now taking possession of the car and the car is basically in pieces. You know, it's one of those stories when you first hear it, you don't know if you actually believe it until you see it. Now, a few years ago, when we had the rental car company, we had this incredible young guy, Pedro. He, came from Brazil, he interned with us. At the time, Lula V, our rental car company, rented to a lot of Brazilian clients coming to Miami. So Pedro was Portuguese speaking, he knew a lot about the car community in Brazil, so he was an incredible asset to our business at the time. Now, unfortunately, Pedro had to go back to Brazil, and he's sort of been stuck there because visa issues and things like that. And one day, we hopefully can get Pedro back to the US, but we've used Pedro in a lot of ways to help us with different things in Brazil. And I immediately reached out to Pedro and I said, do you know where this city is? And he said, yeah, it's actually outside of Sao Paulo. So it's it's not really the jungle. But I, I said, do you mind going and sort of taking photos? We don't have photos of this car. We know about where it is. Do you mind going and inspecting this car? Now, Pedro had no idea where the chassis numbers would be on a Mira, but I he basically gave him like this diagram of, you know, here's the front hood stamp, here's the rear hood stamp. There's two stamps on the door handles. There's a stamp on the rear trunk. And you know, you can't really fake those things. So, you know, when you look at a Mira SV, you could read a pretty quickly tell, okay, that's a real car. It's, you know, it's, it's all, it's all there. So Pedro makes, you know, the, the, I think he had to fly in or whatnot. And he makes the, the flight um, from his town in Brazil to, to this town outside of Sao Paulo. And he starts sending me photos. And my jaw is just on the floor because this Mura, which is, you know, Mura SVs sell between three and $4 million is absolutely in pieces. And it is just in the worst state of disrepair to the point where at some point someone had stripped the car and they'd left a lot of the metal bare. So there's corrosion, there's all these sorts of things. There's, there's whatever's left of the interior. There's mold, there's rips, there's a wheel sitting on a box. There's carburetors over here. The hood is off it up against a wall in this car is probably the worst state I've ever seen in a Mura that was still salvageable. I mean, it hadn't burned to the ground, but I can only imagine what it was gonna take to restore this car. So, you know, obviously, it, cause we're a little nuts, we said, okay, we're interested. And um, we, you know, we started to negotiate for this car. And at the time, the endeavor was sort of, you know, I felt pretty comfortable because it was coming through someone that's so well respected in the industry. And, you know, he said, okay, great. What we'll do is you send me a deposit. I'll send it to the owner to lock up the car. And then what we'll try to do is get an inventory of all the parts we'll get it delivered to the port and then you can pay by escrow or you can pay some, you know, in some matter. And I forget the exact price, but it was well over a million dollars. It might've been almost $2 million at the time. And listen, that's a lot of money to send to Brazil to someone you don't know. And, you know, especially when a car's almost in boxes or in pieces. So a few weeks went by, we sent our deposit at this point and the car's starting to get, you know, put together slowly. And about a month went by and I was starting to get worried. I was like, hey, let's close this car. Let's wrap up this deal. And our friend that, you know, was basically putting this deal together said, man, it's, it's weird. I haven't heard from anyone. So another couple, couple weeks go by and Again, I hear, no, we haven't heard anything. And now, because this was, you know, a few years ago, we were still a young company. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a big company or young company, you're worried about your deposit. Now I'm worried about my deposit. So I'm starting to actually put some pressure and I'm saying, hey, do I need to send someone in Brazil? Do I need to call the authorities in Brazil? Like, what do I actually need to do 
to either secure this car or get my money back. I actually called Pedro and I said, hey, Pedro, can you stop by this place again? You know, we'll pay for your plane ticket, fly back. And Pedro goes and he's greeted by this gentleman at this warehouse area and he's pretty rude this time. And he's like, you guys got to relax. We're going to get this car together. And he almost won't even let Pedro take new pictures of the car. He won't let him see the car or anything. Now I'm starting to get nervous. Now our deposit's at risk. And really, I was really excited about the car. I had started talking to a, two great collectors in Europe and you know we we're very transparent about the car. And we showed them all the photos and we said, this is a massive project. It could be six, $700,000 to restore a car in this shape, but it is a cool example. It was originally one of the very rare silver Mira SVs. It was bought by a lawyer that actually lived in Portugal. And at some point he left Portugal and he arrived in Brazil and he actually drove this car in Brazil for a few years. And then at some point in the 80s, he decided he wanted it red. And that's when the car was stripped to bare metal and unfortunately just sat there for many, many years. Now there was a belief that the car might have had a small fire. When we looked at the carburetors, they were a little dark and that was sort of common of mirrors in that period. So that could have been another reason the car was parked. But nonetheless, we were starting to dig for the history. It was a matching numbers car, which is obviously a plus. And we had these two gentlemen from Europe that were very interested in buying this car and telling the story with us and sort of unveiling it and doing this, this whole restoration together. More weeks went by and now we were really worried. You know, Pedro was turned away when he showed up to take more pictures and now we were scared. And one day, a broker off Instagram starts sending me pictures of a Mura SV in Brazil. And now I'm pretty concerned because now this broker is offering me this car for more money than I, we had agreed and we had a contract to with deposit. So I immediately call our, our, our mutual friend who's basically handling this deal for us. And I said, listen, you've got to tell this gentleman now, the seller, the son of the former owner, that, you know, he's got to send us our deposit back. He can't be offering this car around, you know. A few weeks go by and one day out of nowhere from California, our deposit arrives in the form of a wire. Now, I almost didn't want to actually believe that the deposit just arrived back because it was sort of sketchy how everything went down. So, you know, I just sort of accepted it and said, okay, thank God we got our deposit back. We lost the car and, you know, it is what it is. And the gentleman, you know, very well-respected guy in, in between said, I, I apologize. You know, I want you guys to have your, you know, you got your deposit back. And he told me that he actually received the deposit from the son and that, you know, something had happened. They couldn't clear up the, I guess, because the car had been off the road for so many years, there was registration fees owed and they couldn't clear up the tax situation. All these different things coming out of Brazil. And I'm hearing all these stories of basically him saying, I'm sorry, and, you know, getting out of the deal. Four months later, I'm talking to a colleague and he's telling me this insane story about a Mira SV. And I realized it's our Mira SV that we unfortunately could never purchase. And essentially what happened was the son, the current owner of the car, while he was making excuses that he was in a fight with his sister and over the estate, and there was another excuse about registration, all these different excuses during the time he had our deposit, um, apparently had sold the car to a dealer out of Texas in the Midwest that had the car sold to someone else. Now, apparently it sold the car for not too much more money, but a little bit more money. So he'd basically taken our deposit and then shopped the car to someone else, collected more money, and now he had their money. And I would say the most wild part of the story is apparently he had structured their, their deal the same as ours. So the deal was that they had sent him a deposit and then the car would have to be assembled and then the car would be moved to the port. And once the car was at the port, Basically, they would send the rest of the money. So they actually got as far to have the car assembled. Um, they got photos of the car assembled. Um, I actually received those photos. The car was sitting in like some apartment building. That was like a bunch of parts put together. And they had received photos and word that the car got to the port and they sent the whole amount of money, which I think was like 1.5 or $1.6 million. And basically, imagine they thought they had bought a Mira SV and the car was at the port. Well, apparently a day later or two days later, this Mira SV was stolen from the port. Now this, the owner of the car is saying that, I don't know what happened. I don't have the car and you know, I'm sorry, but it was stolen. I have nothing to do with that. So I can't even imagine what this, this dealer group was feeling out of Texas in the Midwest because I would be freaking out. I know there's 
you know, extradition laws and all these different things between the U.S. and Brazil. The Brazilian legal system is different than the U.S. legal system. So I can't even imagine what they were thinking, but they immediately hired a private investigator. And the private investigator flew to Brazil and he started doing research. And what he found out was that the, the owner, the actual son, the owner of the car, actually stole the car paid someone to steal the car out of the port, took possession of the car, and was trying to resell the car again. Now the crazy story is after trying to reach the owner and after trying to somehow reach the authorities in Brazil, this private investigator ends up making some friends with, I guess, authorities or police or whatnot in Brazil. And he's at like, you know, some morning coffee shop one day and he's just having coffee and I guess he's frustrated. He can't find the car, he can't find anything. And who is sitting next to him at this place is the owner of the Mira, who has now stolen the car, has their money, the car, and potentially my deposit money, and they basically force him at that moment into giving them the car. So they ended up retrieving the car. The car ended up going to Europe. There's actually a funny story. Apparently when it arrived in Italy, a snake was in the car and a snake came out and all the Italian workers like freaked out because it's probably a snake from Brazil. The story goes that they ended up restoring the car and the car's now, I think it's somewhere in Europe and it was a beautiful restoration in silver and it was finished right. But I believe to this day, that I actually never really got my deposit back. I actually think that the gentleman between us and the seller was just, he had such a good reputation um, and he probably felt very responsible that he actually sent us the money. I always found it weird that it came from a California attorney, not this Brazilian. Now, it is possible that the Brazilian sent the money back. Regardless, we were made whole. Um, it was a very scary situation. Um, I can't even imagine how scary it was for the other individuals. And since that point, I don't, buy cars out of Brazil. And, and if I can't move a car at least once, or I can't verify um, that I can take some sort of possession or inspect a car at a dealer, I am not sending my money overseas. Buying a used car can be scary, difficult, and risky, especially if it's a long way away from you. And the perfect partner in that shopping process is the Lemon Squad. We want to thank them for their support of Vinwiki this month, but I have to thank them for going out and checking out an Aventador that I found recently. It was actually a Lemon Law buyback, and it was yellow, just the perfect scenario to test out the Lemon Squad. And it's amazing how inexpensive it is for them to go almost immediately, like the next day, to check out the car in person if you can't get there. And of course, they uncovered tons of things, which made me even more excited about all the other things I was gonna use to negotiate. And as I was doing so, somebody saw it online, did no inspection, and paid full boat retail, at least 100 grand more than the car was worth. So be sure to use the Lemon Squad to check out the next car that you're looking for, and hopefully they'll save you just as much money if the idiots don't find it first.